In today's video, we'll do a beginner's guide to futures in Flutter. If you're new to the Fold Stacks channel, please subscribe and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Please excuse the audio in this video. I'm in the middle of a move and I have no furniture so there'll be an echo in the room that I'm recording. You also might hear my dog snore or walk around every few seconds so please ignore that and let's continue with the video. You can start off by creating a new Flutter project called Future Guide. We'll open that in Visual Studio Code. We'll then remove all the comments and the code from the main file and set the home as a scaffold with a floating action button. In this tutorial, we will go over the following things for futures. We will look at how to define a future, how to use a future, how to do error handling in a future. We'll look at managing multiple futures at once. And then we'll also look at the future timeout behavior. The whole tutorial will take place in the debug console, so clear that and drag it down so that it's always open. To define a future in Dart, all you have to do is return a type of future from the function or the variable that you are declaring. We'll define a new future called myFuture and we'll make it return a type string. And for the return type, we need to return a future, so we'll use the future.value constructor and we will pass back a string, this future is complete. Now we can move on to using a future. There's two main ways to use a future. One is using the async await and the other is subscribing with the dot then call. You'll use the await option when you want to wait for the future to complete before continuing the execution. And the dot then call is used when your code can continue executing after the future has been called. We'll start with the most popular, the async await. You'll mark your onPressed function as async and then we'll store the value of this future in a variable called future value. Then we'll say await and we will call our future. And lastly, we'll print out the future value. Pull up the debug console, clear it out. And if you press the floating action button, you should see that your future value has been printed out. So in the my future function, you see that we're using the future dot value constructor. And that's because if you don't do that, your function is not returning a future. To make your function return a future without explicitly doing that, you just mark it as async and the return value will always be wrapped inside of a future. Now that our function is async, we can do a simple delay and we'll keep it a duration of one second so we can have a longer running task. Then in the onPress function, let's add a print function to tell us that the future has started. This way we can see when the future starts and when it finishes. So open up the debug console again, clear it out. And if you press this value, you'll see that it prints out future started and then after one second, it prints out the future has completed. You can go ahead and remove all the code from the onPressed and you can also remove the async keyword as well. We'll start off and we'll print out future started. Then we can call the future and we can subscribe to it using the then call. This call will pass back the value that is returned from the future. So we'll give it an anonymous function that as a parameter called value and inside of this function we will print out future finished. You can open up the console, clear it out, you'll see future started and then future finished afterwards. The difference between this and the async await is that the function will not wait for the future to complete to continue executing. And if you add a print statement after your subscribe call to the future, you'll see that it prints out immediately after the future started print statement. And that is because it does not wait for the execution of your future to finish before completing the function. Next up, we will look at error handling. There's two ways to return an error from your future. The one is to use the future.error constructor and you can pass in a message as your error message. We'll update our future and remove the string and instead we will return a future error and we will return some string as the message. If you clear the console and run the code, you will see that when this future is completed, it will have an unhandled exception thrown and it will be printed out in the console. To handle this in a better way, you can also supply an onError function to the then subscribe call. And in this function, you will get the error that is passed into your constructor below and you can print that out so that you have better handling of your errors. If you clear out the console now and run the code, you'll see that when the error happens, it'll just print out as a normal function and the exception is handled. 
The second way that you can handle this if you are not using the then subscribe call is by using the catch error function on the future itself. This gives you the exact same functionality as the catch error so you get your error message and you can print that out. The second way to return an error from a future is by simply throwing an exception. If you run this code now you will probably get a breakpoint because it's an unhandled exception but you can still continue the execution and you'll see that it is caught in your catch error call from your future. You'll get a breakpoint if in your debug settings you have your unhandled exceptions ticked at the bottom left there. One thing to note about the catch error call is that it can be used with the, the async await keywords as well. So if we turn this call into an async await call and then running this code, everything will still work out the same. The only difference is that your execution will now wait for your future to be complete before it continues the on pressed function. That's it for the error handling. You can remove the code and we'll go on to managing multiple futures. The future class has a named constructor called wait and this takes in a list of futures and returns a future. You can then await on this future and only once all the futures that it contains has been completed it will return its value to you. That's the functionality that we'll use to manage multiple futures. So if you have something like a download manager you can start multiple downloads, add them to a list, and then wait for your future to finish based on the list that you have supplied it. We can go ahead and create a new future that returns a boolean called download file. It will take in an integer for the ID and it will also take in a duration so that we can set that from the outside. To fake this download, we'll start off with a delay and we'll set the duration of our delay equal to the seconds passed in through our duration parameter. Then we want to print out that the download has completed for the ID and at the end of this we would want to return the true value indicate that the download has completed. Then let's create another future which will be called run multiple futures. To start off let's define a list of type future and call it futures. Then we'll just add a for loop that runs 10 times and inside we will add a future using the download file future that we created above. The ID will be the index of the for loop and we will use the random generator from the dot math library to generate a number between 0 and 10. To make sure that your, your random generator works, make sure to import dot math. And now let's get on to actually waiting for all these futures to complete. We'll await on a future and we'll use the wait constructor and pass in the futures that we created in the variable above. Let's add some logs so we can see what's happening. We will print out that the download has started and then after the wait call we also want to print out that all downloads have completed. Then go up to the onPress function and we'll call our run multiple downloads. Then you can open up the debug console, clear it out and if you press the floating action button you'll see that the downloads are completing at different times and when all of these downloads have been completed, we'll see the last log saying all downloads completed. The last thing for us to look at is future timeouts. This is very useful functionality if you want to contain the responsive UI and you don't want your users to have to wait too long for certain tasks that might take longer than you expected to. Let's take the scenario of having a task that downloads an image but you don't want the user to wait for more than two seconds. Instead, you'd rather stop the current future and then show a retry button on screen. Let's create a new future called my timed out future. It will return a value of type string. We will make it async and then inside we will add a delay. We'll give it a duration of five seconds and then we'll return a string from the future. Up in the onPress function, we can go ahead and call the myTime.future. I'm just going to add another print above the delay to say that the future has started. We'll then go ahead and mark our onPressed function as async. And we'll store the value of this future in a variable called future value that we'll await on. Then we will add the timeout functionality. And on the future itself, there's a function called timeout. And you can give this function a duration and it will execute the on timeout function after that duration and cancel your original future as well. So we'll give our timeout function a duration of two seconds 
and inside the timeout function we will print out that this future has been timed out. The other cool thing that this function allows you to do is to return an actual value to the future that you're expecting. That's where your future value won't be null after the execution, so you can still have a value based on the timeout. The last thing for us to do is to print out after the execution that the future has complete and we'll print out the future value. Pull up the debug console and clear it out. If we run this code, you'll see that you'll see the future started and then it times out, printing out that it is timed out and it then completes with the value returned from the future timeout function and not the value from the actual future itself. This becomes pretty useful if you want to do things like retries. You can return your retry count and you can continue retrying until you have exhausted your retries and yeah. That's it for my guide to futures for beginners. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, please like this video and I will see you guys next week.